What's good, everybody? This is the Kid DC Wrestling back once again with another video. And once again, we're doing another reaction video, but this time it's not any GCW or all that extreme stuff. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But today, for the first time ever, we are going to react to a certain YouTube channel by the name of Super Kick Studios. Definitely, in my opinion, one of the best content creators here in the YWC produces, in my opinion, way better content than you'll see from a woke culture or a, you know, wrestle talk or any of those clickbait YouTube channels. Recently, he put out a video entitled Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, the never ending saga. Uh, it's kind of crazy because uh, about a few months ago, leading into WrestleMania, I did a video entitled the story of Brock Lesnar versus uh, Roman Reigns. Not gonna lie, with the way this is looking like, I feel like this is gonna be way better than I than I did. Um, but anyways, let's not waste any time. I know you guys want to see my reaction, so we'll stop the video to give a few points. Um, by the way, again, this is fair use, so hopefully WWE does not take this video down because you know how AEW and WWE be with their copyright situations. But with that being said, let's go ahead, check the video out. And uh, if you haven't, man, make sure you subscribe to Superkick Studios. Again, cool guy. Let's give him the 100K. He definitely deserves it. Yeah, these two have taken that chant a little bit too literal. And for the better part of the past eight years, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns have been joined at the hip. This year at SummerSlam, they're set to have their seventh one-on-one -on -one match on pay-per-view. And it's got a lot of fans really tired. There are some, including myself, who are actually excited to see what these two can do in a last man standing match. I think True. it has potential to be a perfect car crash. But there are people out there who are just really sick and tired of this repeat cycle. Yeah. You might ask, well, they're tired of seeing this match main event what seems like every pay-per-view. They've seen it three times at WrestleMania and each time with a progressively worse match in retrospect. The problem that many fans have is not necessarily with Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar as people. The problem is they're not enjoying this copy-paste booking. It seems like for every big pay-per-view where there's a clear other option, WWE runs back to the well with this story. That's true. Look, guys, the reality is some people that's forget that's is that this match true. draws money. No matter how many times it happens, at the end of the day, for WWE, that's the goal. To make money. To put mm -hmm. butts in the seats at SummerSlam, sell merch, and all the rest. And let me remind you that there was a time... I want to pause it right there. 114. He is absolutely true. It's business. At the end of the day, it's business. Why Why do you think... Why do you think back in the day Hogan was getting pushed? Why do you think Hogan was retaining the belts, main event in the shows, winning all the time? He was making the money. It's, that, that's what Vince McMahon and WWE has always been about. At the end of the day, it is a business. Roman Reigns has shown, you know, he's drawn. Brock Lesnar, one of, one of the last big draws in wrestling... That's probably why they still go with this at the end of the day, because they know it's going to make them money, regardless that we've seen it over and over again. Where we had two other guys, Cena, Orton. These guys wrestled for what felt like forever. And now yes, they did. <laughs> clamoring for just one more match. So, hey, man, one thing I've learned in wrestling is to just enjoy things while you have them. Nothing lasts forever unless, you know, you're Ric Flair. But before <laughs> we analyze the good and the bad in this rivalry up until this point, it's important to see how we got here and the arduous path between these two. Chapter 1, Youngin'. Versus veteran. Cast your mind back to 2015. The Royal Rumble of that year is where WWE strapped a rocket to Roman Reigns and they wanted to build the next generation of the company with him at the forefront. Coming out of the shield, he was naturally cool, but they gave him a character of basically looking like Super Cena number two. And as you'll see later on, characters can really make or break stories. He won the Royal Rumble and even got big time endorsement from The Rock, but it wasn't enough. Fans hijacked that night. And you might ask why. Well, it was too much too soon. They didn't like the direction of the character, and he himself didn't exude qualities of a guy who was ready at ha this point. Hashtag athletic, cancel the network. The look, but he just didn't seem ready. Add to that that Daniel Bryan, who a lot of fans wanted in the main event, was cast aside a year after he won the big one at Mania. But nonetheless, Reigns was going to face Brock at WrestleMania 31 in the main event. Brock had captured the WWE title off John Cena at SummerSlam 2014 after his historic win against The Undertaker. 
The basis for this story was the young gun versus the veteran, and what didn't help their cause heading into WrestleMania is that on the go home, they had a tug of war for the WWE title. Regardless, it was a fresh new matchup that we hadn't seen before. Yes, it was. Going in, there was next to no expectation for this. It was basically like, all right, give Roman the title and move on. But they exceeded all expectations and they turned what many believe would be a dud into an all-time main event. The match, it was a knockout, dragout fight. Brock Lesnar throwing around Roman, Roman countering with his explosiveness and power. But that main event is mostly remembered for what Michael Cole coined the heist of the century. Seth Rollins came out, cashed in his money in the bank, and it wasn't Brock, it wasn't Roman. It was Seth Rollins who walked the out. Greatest the greatest cash in still of all time. This finish was pretty crazy considering that it looked like Roman was going to get the win. His dad, Sika, even wanted him to quit the WWE because of this finish. Reigns had about 50 family members in attendance that night, and the plan was for him to win the WWE title, get his crowning moment. But mm. midway through the show, those plans changed, and it resulted in Roman's dad reportedly being ready to start a war. Mm. And a war is what this match was. The higher ups were probably as stunned as we were as to just how well these two meshed together. And for Vince McMahon, he'd found a formula that would lead him into the next generation Roman and Brock. But here began a problem that we've seen before, the recycle cycle, where you find a formula that works and to avoid building up a new and refreshing story, you go back to the well and you continue a feud that's exhausted all aspects of it already. In turn, not only annoying the fan base, but having a ripple down effect on the rest of the roster. Mm. And as you'll see later on in this video, it's not a good effect. A cycle that we've seen with the likes of Randy Orton and John Cena, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, more recently, Sasha Banks and Charlotte, and for WWE, they just haven't been able to get out of this holding pattern. This was the catalyst for what we have today. And as much as this rivalry is ragged on, there's been points of this story that have been absolutely fantastic. Anyways, through 2015, the company cooled it with Roman Reigns, and come early 2016, Roman's push was in full swing again. The next time Brock and Roman would meet would be in the main event of Fastlane 2016, this time with Dean. That match... With Ambrose, Reigns, and, and Brock, I thought that match was underrated. That That's a match I feel like a lot of people do not talk about, which is shocking. Like it, it, I thought it was a pretty good match. It, it's pretty underrated. Um, I, I'm really surprised a lot of people do not talk about this match. I don't know if it's because it was on Fastlane, and let's be real, Fastlane is it's not a really memorable pay-per-view. But um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that there. Ambrose in the mix as well. This was a number one contenders match to see who would face Triple H for the WWE title. This one was won by Roman, but he pinned Dean to do so. So Roman was going to WrestleMania 32. He ended up winning that match. Lesnar remained busy with the likes of Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, and Goldberg through 2016 and early 2017. It was at WrestleMania 33 where Brock beat Goldberg for the Universal title. It was that same Universal title where these two would meet again. This time in a multi-man match featuring Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman. The story this time was another so good match. I was, were going after that each match other. was they awesome. A number one at SummerSlam, so this was thrown together, and this match was a beautiful car crash. I love this match. Near falls, carnage, a huge emphasis on power throughout the match. Mm -hmm. Each man having their time to shine, and again, it was Brock who came out on top, pinning Roman Reigns' shoulders to the mat. Here, Brock would basically go into retreat with Raw's top prize. Brock was filling his obligations as a part-time performer. He only had to show up a select number of dates, so the company leaned into the story for the next year's WrestleMania. Chapter 2, Mercenary versus Hero. Roman won the Elimination Chamber, giving him a Universal title match at WrestleMania 34. The second, these two would meet in a WrestleMania main event. The story was simple. Brock never showed up, and Roman was going to fight to bring the title back to Raw. The company continued to position Roman Reigns as a conquering hero where the clear direction was for him to play the bad guy. Upon a rewatch, you can see that in 2018, he's improved a ton on the mic, but his one fatal flaw was the audience's reception towards him. There were still fans yeah, who just were still didn't going. buy him as a good guy yet. <laughs> this was something that added fuel to the ongoing dislike for this rivalry. It was basically like, all right, you're giving us a copy paste of a match that we saw two years ago. Meanwhile, this guy is basically being shoved down our throats and don't get that twisted, some people, they loved Roman, but for a majority, it seemed like a split. The push for him to play a bad guy was really heavy, and I tell you this because it becomes important as the story wears into present day. So they have Roman handcuffed. <laughs> Look at Ricky Starks. Starks. <laughs> They're really looking into the fact that the entire roster wants Brock dethroned as champion. Who, who would have thought? Roman. 
Roman gets suspended for calling Lesnar Vince's boy, and they tried to build sympathy for Reigns by having him as a guy who, even while he was suspended, he would just show up like a badass. It kind of worked, kind of didn't. I guess it depends on how you see it. Going into WrestleMania, fans expected Roman to stand tall for a third straight Mania, having beat Triple H and Undertaker at the past two. But to our Rob surprise, the winner really was Brock Lesnar. News it came out that Lesnar was looking for a UFC return and his contract was going to expire, but he instead re-signed. This match seemed pretty awkward at points. Also, the crowd seemed to give a very minimal reaction to big spots and there were loud boos throughout the match. It just seemed like people didn't really care. Brock won with a 6th F5, leaving Reigns bloodied and raw without a full-time champion. Just 19 days later, a rematch would happen at the Greatest Royal Rumble, this time inside a steel cage. And the idea heading in was that if WWE were to have Roman win the title, it would be a bit calmer, I guess you could say, because the Saudi crowd would be more receptive to a Reigns title win. True. Well, in North America, he'd probably get booed out of the building. The match clocked in at night. That's true. You, 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 you probably would have got cheered in, in Saudi if you Nine minutes won. and 15 seconds and came to an end when Reigns speared Brock through a panel of the steel cage. Reigns' feet clearly touched first, but Lesnar was awarded the win. And now there was even more confusion, frustration, and a lack of apathy for a lot of wrestling fans. A lot of them were just sick and tired of this repeat cycle. These two would meet for a third and final time in 2018, okay. this time at SummerSlam. They continued this thread of painting Brock as the guy who used his contract to never show up, having Raw revolve around Brock and Roman. Reigns continued to call out Brock, but to no avail. They also teased Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns aligning together after Brock and Paul had an on-screen falling out. The foreshadowing is honestly so crazy. But of course, it was all a ruse. Paul blinding Roman to make the crowd sympathetic towards Roman. We get to Brooklyn for SummerSlam, and right as the bell is about to ring, Braun Strowman comes out, and he says he's going to cash in the money in the bank on the winner. The company used the prospect of a money in the bank cash-in to keep the crowd engaged in the match and make sure that they wouldn't just boo both guys into oblivion because they themselves knew that this would get a negative response from the crowd. You go and you watch this, Strowman's reaction is thunderous. I'm pretty sure nobody wanted either of these guys to be champion. This match, it was a fast-paced one. Reigns coming out with three Superman punches and two spears before Brock caught the third into a guillotine. And then the crowd erupts into a You Both Suck chant, so I think I it's fair that. to say that they were just a little annoyed at seeing this for a third straight time. Roman... I think, I think even when Roman won, like... People even even Roman end, ends the five hundred day reign because Brock was like champion for five hundred days here and they still booed so like clearly people were not happy. Now when Braun came out, pe people were like, "Yes, cash him," but we all know what happened there. And Brock each take out Strowman. Brock then flings the contract to the top of the ramp. This was to get Strowman out of the match, and quickly, WWE ended this match right away. Yep. Roman hits a spear, one, two, three, the company cuts out quickly. No cash-in, but Reigns has finally done it. Unfortunately, Roman Reigns announced that he had to leave WWE for a while as his leukemia returned. These two wouldn't meet again for three years. Now, it's important to remember the dynamic between these two. Roman was always presented as the conquering hero for the people, while Brock was just there to cash a check and be a mercenary. But in 2020, that dynamic changed, and this story, in my opinion, mm. became the most interesting that it had ever been. Chapter 3, Old Story, New Life. The pandemic rolls around. Brock was basically nowhere to be seen after WrestleMania 36. WWE was producing shows out of the Thunderdome. And at the end of SummerSlam, Roman returned from a brief hiatus to be with his family. And the prayers of many had finally been answered. Roman Reigns was now a heel. The tribal chief was born, and he really went all in with this. Strong character work, different presentation, strong storytelling. The greatest the thing WWE has ever, ever done for between, Roman. He became what many had been clamoring for him to become for years. But arguably the biggest game changer in this entire thing was Paul Heyman, now in Roman Reigns' corner. The same Heyman who, with the exception of a few years, had managed Brock Lesnar's entire career since 2002. Reigns became universal champion. He had defenses against guys like Edge, Daniel Bryan, Jey Uso, Kevin Owens. And then came the biggest one of them all, John Cena at SummerSlam 2021, mm -hmm. where with one spear, he beat the former face of the company. He had built this amazing star aura to him, 
Just as he celebrates and SummerSlam is coming to an end, <laughs> Brock Lesnar came calling. After over a year away, he was back with a new grizzled look, now sporting a ponytail and a different attire. But the biggest difference was motivation. You saw a more fun-loving, laid-back, no Fs given Brock. And Farmer Brock was something that none of us knew we needed, but something we all loved. I'm going to say this right now. Cowboy Brock is probably one of the most... It's probably the most entertaining Brock Lesnar we've ever had. Like, Brock, don't get me wrong, Brock, if you all remember back in the old days when, you know, Brock, you know, when he was an old heel, he was good. But, like, this Brock was just, has been entertained. The, the, to me, this is probably the best Brock I, I personally have seen. Cowboy Brock, goaded, awesome, just, ugh. Sorry for pausing all the time, though, but like I, I just had to say that. Sorry. To see. Brock Lesnar was just living his best life. He was back to get <laughs> some answers, and he was back for blood. Now, just like that, a change in this story. Both guys with an undeniable aura and star presence. No whining about being Vince's boys, even though they're both Vince's boys. The suspense was all lying around where Paul Heyman's allegiance lied. This was really interesting, in my opinion. Was it with Roman or was it with Brock? The past or the current? The suspense of this story took turns like Brock asking Paul, why didn't you tell Roman I was going to be at SummerSlam? And then Roman kind of going, yo, I, I think Paul's a snake. To then reaffirming that Heyman was with Roman, but Brock insisted that Roman was getting played. So it was this flip-flop on the weekly of confusion that this whole time Heyman was with Reigns, but it was only a setup until Brock returned. All signs led to Heyman and Brock trying to get one over on Roman, and all three parties involved deserve huge praise. Reigns, Heyman, and Lesnar, they executed this so well, from Heyman's expressions to Reigns' mannerisms to Brock just having fun. So when Crown Jewel came, it was a question as to who was walking out the Universal Champion and who Heyman would help. Now, mm. the matches haven't been the best for the most part. They've delivered some underwhelming duds, but yeah, this one with Crown Jewel just had a big fight feel around it. I think it's their second best one after WrestleMania 31 up until this point. The finish came when the rep was out. Heyman threw the title into the middle of the ring and he says, you know what to do with it. But we don't know who he's talking to. Both guys play tug of war with the title. Who says long-term booking is dead? Lesnar gets it, but as he turns, he's caught by the Usos, followed by a championship shot to the face from Roman Reigns. And Reigns gets the win and he walks out with Heyman. But this wasn't over just yet. Brock got suspended and then his suspension was later lifted. And one week, Reigns was gone from WWE TV and Brock and Heyman looked like they were still <laughs> in a partnership. Adam the Pierce company played it up handsome. as Heyman two-timing Reigns, showing feelings for Brock. Anyways, later Heyman asked, was it him or was it Brock? And Heyman says that he was protecting Reigns from Brock. And to add another shocking turn to this story, Reigns fired Paul Heyman, punching him in the face. Mm. They teased a Paul Heyman retirement, and now there was more heightened drama heading into WWE Day 1. These two were set to main event for the Universal title, and it should be noted that reports emerged that at Day 1, WWE were looking at a finish that would justify a WrestleMania rematch between these two, maybe involvement from Heyman or a completely screwy finish, but the match never ended up happening. Reigns tested positive for COVID-19, throwing the main event into disarray and throwing Brock into the WWE title match. Really Here he beat Seth Rollins, there. Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and Big E to capture the WWE title. Oh, there's no oh they got the, um, he got uh, in the clutch reaction in that. I like, uh, in the clutch, another good YouTubers in the uh, community. Definitely, definitely uh, cool dudes, man. The, the, my opinion, one of the best reaction channels. The only reaction channel that I watch, man. Those guys are good. Um, yeah, that's, I like how he did that. Yeah, a lot of people were happy about this. I mean, hell? rightfully so. I mean, it's Big E. Because Big E lost the title. 
Everybody was so excited for Biggie Ray. Brock just come in and squashed it like he did Kofi. Now, I just praised the lead up to Crown Jewel. Here, things started to get really, really messy. Stories started to get sacrificed, and some fans got even more annoyed. Okay. If that report is to be believed, these two were going to fight for the Universal Championship regardless. It was supposed to be for just the Universal title at WrestleMania, but now Brock also had the WWE title. Post day one, Reigns returned, and we still hadn't gotten this match. Brock made it evident that he wanted title for title. Heyman, after getting tossed aside, went to the line with Brock again. Instead, both guys went off to do their own thing at the Rumble, and it should be noted that storyline-wise, there were some hints of Heyman's allegiance still lying with Roman Reigns, even though he was with Brock. At the Rumble, things in my opinion got really muddy with this storyline. Reigns won his match against Rollins, and later in the night, there was a literal dream match for so many people. Lesnar versus Lashley. Indeed it was. Now, the title, but the match was instead used as a bridge to another Reigns versus Lesnar match. Reigns came in, he asked Heyman for the title, Heyman handed it to him, and Lashley took the title off Brock after Reigns interfered. And so quickly, Heyman was back with Roman. From a storyline standpoint, this was really rushed. Just a month and a bit ago, they did the turn, and now they accelerated things just to flip-flop back and forth. True. That same night, Lesnar won the Royal Rumble, and he chose to face Roman Reigns for the Universal... And, sorry again, sorry for pausing, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't really need it. He, he didn't really need to win the Rumble. Speaking of which, that rumble was just, it wasn't that good. Title, but before that, at the Elimination Chamber, Brock won back the WWE title. Squashing so everyone. WWE got rid of another potential WrestleMania World title feud so that these two could have a winner-take-all match. This was now blood for blood. These two, for the third time, would main event WrestleMania. And to put that into perspective, the Rock and Stone Cold, they've had three WrestleMania matches. They've only main evented two of those. So Brock's playing real life, here comes the pain to get Roman's blood, and this has now exhausted all areas of this storyline. Brock was just living his best life, he was having fun, he was one of the most entertaining parts of WWE. Come WrestleMania, they called this the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. That's oh, not just, true, but it, it's not. this show, this match wasn't a repeat of WrestleMania 31 or even 34. It was the worst one in this trilogy. Yes, Reigns it was. took the win in what's safe to say a really anti And And another thing with that, you know, Roman, I get, well, you know, his, his, you know, shoulder and everything was hurt. Yeah, that, that match was just, all right, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, guys, um, video got cut off, and, I, and video by, like, I mean, like, uh, my, my iPhone just cut off, you know, with the storage and everything, but we're back at it once again, I repaused the video, this is where we ended it off at. Again, I, I really, really, really apologize for that. Like, I deeply do. But let's go ahead and let's finish this off. This is really good video so far, Super Kick Studio. Once again, another good video. But uh, obviously, we still got another good 10 to 8 minutes left. So let's go ahead and finish this off in style. I'll try not to do with much pausing. We'll see. Let's go ahead and continue the Ro Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, the never-ending cycle. Let's do it. 750. 1750. Climactic match. The match actually didn't feature any injuries. The report was that this is exactly how the company wanted things to go down. Regardless, Reigns won and he became Dang. a double champion. And here he basically disappeared with sporadic appearances here and there, now basically leaving WWE without a full time world champion and essentially holding both titles hostage. One of those appearances would be a title defense against Riddle, where he retained and Brock would match. return again. So, here we go again. The company <laughs> has now announced that Brock Lesnar will take on Roman Reigns in a last man standing match for the last time ever in the main event last of time Summer ever. Slam 2022. You, are you know what that quote reminds me of? And again, sorry for pausing, but I have to say this. You know what that reminds me of? Triple H and The Undertaker. Remember, Super Showdown 2018, last time ever. What happened that very, that the very next pay-per-view? Y'all know how WWE be doing. Y'all y'all know. John Cena and The Rock, once in a lifetime. What was the main event of WrestleMania 29 that following year? I'm just saying that WWE, they y'all know how they be doing these taglines. They they never follow up with these taglines. Trust me. Brock and Rome are gonna end up facing each other again. I'm telling you. 
who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I had to put that out there. I'm sorry. The main event of WrestleMania 65. They're going to have a wheelchair on a pole match. The <laughs> Championship. They're going to do as the signature suggests and go till the end of time. And nothing else is going to happen. They're destined to do this now, forever. Aside, this rivalry has its positives and it has its negatives. I like to give you guys both sides and leave it up to you to form your own opinion. So let's do that. Let's first look at the positives. The first one being the history. There's stuff to play off from the past. This is a feud that's gone on for eight years. So framing this as their last time. match is a great way to put a stamp on everything. Secondly, it's a last man standing match. They haven't had a stipulation match aside from the steel cage match one on one. So this, in my opinion, brings a lot of intrigue, especially because think about it. Are they going to have Brock drop four straight to Roman Reigns? Yeah, I think that is hope true. it's a car crash and everything in sight gets Brock broken and they end things off four with a times. Bang. Next up is a big Pretty one, and one that a lot of people forget. This match draws the company money. Look at anything that involves these two beat on YouTube or merchandise. It sells. I'm yep. not a businessman, but if they're making money, they're succeeding. That's Who true. cares if this is the 50 millionth time they're giving you this match? To them, they're making money, and that's what's important to them. Think to yourself, who are the two biggest stars that they have at their disposal right now? And there's your answer. This is the biggest match that they can possibly put on right now. Also, I think it's been blown out of proportion that this rivalry has been bad, per se. I don't think it's been bad. I do think those initial stages were a time where both guys struggled to give us something of substance. Yeah. I think that those initial stages in 2015, 17, and 18 where Reigns hadn't really found his footing and Brock was basically unmotivated, drags things down a lot in retrospect, but since SummerSlam, it's been a really good rivalry. And the final positive I have for you is with the available stars since everyone under the sun seems to be injured, this seems like a contingency plan. And I think that people got to remember that they were thrown into this situation because Randy got injured, because Cody got injured. So think about it. This is not what was supposed to happen. The original plan was going to be Orton Jesus. versus Reigns, a match that happened all the way back at SummerSlam 2014. And if it would have happened again, Respect that to Cody for doing really that, by exciting the way. and refreshing. I know a lot of us would have been all for that, and it would have been really interesting to see what Lesnar would have done if he would have appeared at all. It's insane how injuries have changed the course of everything. Yes. Realistically, they want a big-time drawing match that's going to attract and say whatever you want. But like I said, this is that match. Now that we've pulled out some positives, let's look at the other side, the negatives. One of the biggest, <laughs> and I've mentioned this before, is that they've exhausted every part of this rivalry. From the whole veteran versus young guy angle, to the whole mercenary versus saving hero of the masses, to the story of where Heyman's allegiance lies, every corner has been covered by this on and off feud for the past eight plus years. And what more can you do? There's only so much you can do with a story like this. And instead of pivoting in directions like making it a multi-man match or having new stars in the fold, they continue to put themselves in a holding pattern. To add to that, you had Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. People had been wanting that match for ages, but instead you devalued that match and Lashley's title win. Which leads me to the next that con. True. And that's sacrificing others' Very championship right reigns and storylines to put all your chips in this feud. At the 2022 Elimination Chamber, Brock Lesnar won the WWE title, and that brought us to a unification match at Mania 38. So basically, a world title feud at WrestleMania with someone else in that position who could have benefited from either holding or competing for a world title was sacrificed just so you could do this match again. And if you want to build a strong foundation, you can't always go in one direction. I don't think the assessment I'm giving is an unfair one. They got to move on from this. And here's the biggest problem the WWE has. All the respect in the world for Roman Reigns, but to build him up as the end all be all, WWE has sacrificed a ton of superstars and they haven't let anyone get to his level or even sniff him. It's basically Roman Reigns and everything else. And I get that he's your top star, all the power to you, but you could find yourself in a situation like you did with Cena. When Cena was leaving, you had to strap a rocket to Roman Reigns. That's true. That's development that you could be doing now rather than hotshotting someone and having the fans potentially turn on said star like they did with Roman. Theoretically, let's say Brock was going to wrestle Gunther this year. Let's say <laughs> that would have benefited Gunther big time. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. you call up Braun Breaker, you have him run. And that would have been a dope months. match too. Ultimately, he ends up losing via shenanigans to Reigns. You've now built intrigue for two new stars that will help move the company forward. That's exposure, and exposure is good, especially when you're in there with guys like Lesnar and Reigns. And if you want to form a new nucleus of talent, 
that's your best way to go. Let them get acquainted with the audience rather than, all right, it's 2025, we don't have Roman anymore. Who are we gonna strap the rocket to and who are they gonna boo for the next four years? That's a problem you're gonna find yourself in. They nope. need to move on from this feud. Have people start I don't, I don't see Roman feuds with guys like- Again, sorry for pause, especially it's close to the end of the video, but he's right, man. Roman, you know, Roman, he, uh, I mean, Roman ain't gonna be in the company another 10 years now, you know, like, you gotta gotta start pushing new stars. Why you think why you think they're doing what they're doing with Deary right now? So yeah. Again, I'm I'm sorry for pausing too much. I really am. Like Brock and Roman. You can't go back and fix your mistakes. Soon those days are coming where you're not gonna be able to call Cena or Lesnar and get them every summer to pop a rating. And that's the negatives I pull from this. They just gotta move on. They gotta build up new stars or they just gotta let new people come into the fold. Like I said earlier, just sit back and enjoy things. This rivalry will go down as a historic one with two of WWE's biggest stars ever. And like I said, we had Cena and Orton mm -hmm. wrestle for what felt soup. like every day and twice on Mondays. And now some of us miss that. Just enjoy it. There have been points where these two have killed it. That post-SummerSlam build towards Crown Jewel in day one was really well done. I like that they made Heyman look vulnerable, but everything's come in pockets. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Like I said, I'm excited for this match. As always, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this rivalry? Are you for it? Are you sick of it? Are you even going to be watching SummerSlam? Talk to me in the comments below. As always, do take very good care of yourself. Peace. Once again, great video by the legend, Superkick Studios. Once again, never disappoint. This is kind of the first time kind of doing a big reaction. But anyways, um, no, like this is, um, you know, Roman and Brock, they've been going on for ages now. You know, hopefully SummerSlam, you know, it is the end. You know, it is, it, you know, and it should be. And it, and it very well could be, who knows? Um, you know, to me, the, the, the Reigns, Lesnar, it's had its ups, it's had its downs. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens at SummerSlam, but this could, you know, the conclusion, who's gonna, who's gonna come out on top, you know? Um, but yeah, WWE's definitely, they, they need, you know, they need to start building up new stars, you know, Roman, you know, I said it countless times, you know, Roman's got a good, maybe another two years left before he decides that I'm out, you know, I might go Hollywood full Hollywood. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But anyways, I don't want to keep this video any longer. We're probably at the 30 mark here. I don't know. We'll see when I'm editing this video. Uh, anyways, appreciate you guys for watching this video. Again, I really do apologize for not just kind of pausing a lot, but also the video cutting off like it did. I really do apologize for that. Anyways, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a video for Sunday. We'll see. Anyways, this has been the Kid DC Wrestling. And so, um, yeah.